In today's abandoned video, we are showcasing Dundee's abandoned Port Authority headquarters in Scotland from our visit two years ago. The impressive structure proudly sits besides the water in the city, containing some ornate architecture that dates back to the mid-1800s. Join us as we cover the entire property to discover what remains. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. <laughs> we had been wanting to make the journey up to Dundee for some time to see this building, maybe even just for exterior appearance alone. Recently the site, which actually consists of two separate premises, harbour chambers and custom house, had been boarded up, so we were doubtful that we would find a suitable entry point. The Georgian style mansion resembling property was constructed from 1842 until roughly a year later, with the importance of seaports vital in the 19th century due to the riches of the trades entering the harbour, as well as Dundee's quite isolated location, the city would rely heavily on product importing by ship. It's no surprise that the complex was one of the largest port authority headquarters in the country to manage the complicated task of a harbour with constant ships docking and exiting. After a little struggle, mostly because of the busy area the building is positioned amidst, we had eventually discovered that we could access Harbour Chambers firstly, which didn't connect at all to the larger custom house. Still, this building supposedly boasted a lot of the details we desired to see, so we were excited to take a walk around. All of these doors are locked, so we won't see what's behind them. I believe this place will be very empty. We have to kind of look for the nice architecture, just like this. Great fireplace and some nice coves. What we had noticed from a dash from the ground floor upwards was that there was a number of motion sensors placed on many doorways inside. Believing that they were old and probably wouldn't link anywhere for safety, we decided to explore top to bottom just in case someone did come to find us. It's cool that some of the furnishings are left in this staff kitchen. Although it seems like the last meal they were cooking was a pigeon on that old stove. Definitely 50s, 60s that. Walking downstairs now. Uh, we did enter downstairs, but came upstairs because of these sensors um, that we quickly found out were flukes and they don't go anywhere. This instantly looks much better. There it is, though, up there, and I've triggered it again. Wow. This is just so much more royal. And to think of this building's use, why it would have this nice architecture doesn't make any sense. Oh my god. Look at that ceiling and the fireplace with the clock on it. It's a shame there's quite a bit of vandalism. 
for something this central in a town, but it's still amazing. from the colour of this paper that it's really old. 1955. Holy shit. That is crazy. I bet buried in the basement and the attic of this building is some really old paperwork. It felt like a real reversal for us, back into an era long forgotten. Clearly with the harbour's trade being one of Dundee's most successful incomes, the city wanted to create a building that reflected their pride and affiliation with the port. Hence incredible features like this boardroom. Looking closely at the hand-carved fireplace, chandeliers, grand windows, intricate ceiling and even a royal-like carpet with small golden ships printed on it. You could imagine the wealth of the people that passed through this room for decades. It seemed like it had hardly changed since its original concept. Some more signs of paperwork, including some clipboards stacked up. Like the ground floor and main entrance here. You can tell by these revolving doors. It's a shame with the drop ceiling. Even though it's just the bars of it, it ruins it. So. There is so many sensors on this lower floor. We set up about five. It's very decayed and smelly down here. Oh. And then all of a sudden it's not that bad. That's a really nice door of the glass. Bathroom. Ah, this is a vault. From what I've been told. But no one can get inside them because they have these key cards. Well, not key cards, pads with the uh, code on. Yeah, I'm not sure what the code is. But I doubt there's anything been left in there. This place has been abandoned for a long time. This is a side entrance, but in fact it's actually nicer than the original one, I think. It doesn't have that gross drop down ceiling. Right, this would have been the reception. Very modern. There's a nice old photo there. All this ground floor is boarded, by the way. Um, I don't think it was all the time, but when the first signs of trespassers got in, they boarded it all up. This looks like a safe. Massive door. Yeah. Nothing in it there. The downstairs regions was very disappointing. Pitch black and most of it modernised with the removal of any dated assets. There's another vault. This one looks a bit bigger. There's a second safe there, I wonder what gems would be hidden inside. It's a large one though, they had a lot of room for storage. Newspapers, archives, something about the shopping mall, different evaluation reports, documentation, leases. Just a lot of documents, but they must have been um, priceless. In this section of the building, we've got some pieces of equipment, such as this rotary phone. Style still works, it's so old though. There's a lot of stuff like that here. Some crests as well. 
It takes you into this old corridor with nice stained glass skylights. I'm interested to see what's inside this room though. So I think it's a boardroom. Wow. Yeah, the wooden panelling is nice, especially with that ship carved above the fireplace. I believe this was like a more modern extension than the rest of the building? Yeah, the building's really old, but this was 1800s, I think. Christ. The rest of the building must be old then. These are the old vaults. I wonder if they open? Not this one. Really? Two and three. I wonder, what, wonder what number one is. Although we did see one actually, but it wasn't numbered. Yeah, probably the one on the other side. The badge has been taken. It's tiled, it's so nice. Well, it's glazed brickwork, actually. Yeah. Nothing left, though, just office paper boxes. After looking into a small section at the back of Harbour Chambers, which had actually been an addition in 1884, only to incorporate more offices and vaults, we had seen every inch of the structure. Now it was time to see if we could make it into its larger neighbour, Custom House. Back out into the rain, we would soon find out that it would be a challenge, but following some patience and effort, we were inside the seemingly bland corridors of the property. The architecture gets a bit nicer here with the arches, but it's also empty in this building compared to the other one. Looks like a nice staircase though. Huge window. Oh, this looks quite interesting. Yeah, has a nice ceiling. It's a shame about the modernisation of this place though. I feel like it has a lot of potential. There's a lot of vandalism in this building compared to the other one. It does feel like it's been abandoned for a longer period too, just from the exterior appearance. Another staircase. Slightly more claustrophobic than the other one, but still really nice in design. Unfortunately, nothing of interest remained in this half of the site. It even appeared that despite modernisation, Custom House had potentially switched uses towards the end of its lifespan and closed before Harbour Chambers. There was considerably more decay, which was nice to see, however, the tricky access hadn't been worthwhile. It doesn't feel like it would take much to renovate this place, although there's decay. The furnishings and floor are intact. Wouldn't be the easiest task, but it's not as impossible as some other ones we've seen. Just noticed that a lot of the doors are locked as well. So some rooms are probably better in condition than others. Not this one though. That was all for Dundee's abandoned Port Authority headquarters. Soggy and tired, we quickly headed out of the bare custom house and attempted to warm up in the car. Although the structures might not seem as conventionally interesting as some of the places we document, they are very historic and unique, so we thought that they deserve some appreciation on the channel.
few 1800s features that are present today might have survived long enough to be restored soon, as the facility was purchased by a hotel company that we believe to have started work on the infamous building. Dundee's harbour history may have a light shone on it once more, when all had appeared lost. The stunning exterior in a prime location for tourists would make for a brilliant hotel, particularly if that special boardroom was left unscathed. Here are some of our photographs from the abandoned port headquarters. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description, where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. There was more abandoned Scotland to see in our last video, or in our exclusive Patreon series Exploring with Hell on Earth, available soon for all donators. See you next time. Thank you.